Hey guys, I am excited because my new helmet finally came in. I had the wine back ordered. That got pushed back from the factory, so I had no choice but to pick another color. I chose black, since that will also match the bike very well. Haven't even taken a look yet. So this is going to be an unboxing and a first impressions overview. And once I get a little bit of seat time in it, I'll give you a real good review of it, especially compared to the RF1000, which it is replacing. And I showed you in my Why You Need to re Replace Your Helmet Every Five Years video. So right here on top, we've got a pin lock lens. And this should be a clear one. You can get different types. And I'm going to order the self-tinting one. It's really cool. It works just like transition lenses, same technology. And this will give me the absolute perfect solution. I won't have any fog. I'll have automatic tinting during the day and none at night. That is going to be absolutely lovely. So I'm just going to order that. I want to make sure that it didn't come with anything extra in the box. And I'll show you how to install that. Real easy. I'm surprised I didn't do that before. It's such a simple idea. And then we have very well packed. Oh, we got instruction manual up here. Take it out of the ziplock. It's all taped to the lid here. Got some extra parts. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna take that off there. All right, what we have in here is the nose guard. Oh, nice. They went to a rubber. This was like a, a stiff felt previously, and the problem with it was it didn't really maintain its shape. This is going inside the helmet, so your nose tucks down in here, so your breath doesn't come back up on your face shield. And this would just kind of flatten out over time in the previous one. But this is a nice rubber piece, so it will not deform. Love that. Very good engineering change there. And then this is the chin guard, this mesh type piece. I never wore it. I tried it, and we don't really have cold weather down here. Even our winters are relatively short and mild. But this prevents wind from coming up your neck. So this installs underneath the helmet and just gives a, a buffer. Just an extra part. It'll just stay with my manual. I won't install that. And got a couple stickers. We have, what is this? It's either glue or it says silicone oil. Ah, interesting. So they give you a little lubrication, presumably for your uh, springs and hinge for the visor. That didn't come in the previous one. Never had an issue with it though, although I did have to replace one of the springs because it snapped. A uh, little tip on that, a lot cheaper to buy a little pack of general springs at Home Depot because one of them in there fits and that whole pack was like four bucks rather than spending, they wanted like 15 for a replacement spring from Shoei. So if you do have one of your visor springs that breaks, go to Home Depot, save some cash. We have some manuals in here. We have the full instruction in multiple languages. Pretty short, looks like about 10 pages. Basically going through all the normal stuff. How to use the vents, how to use the visor, how to replace the visor. That's all standard stuff, I'm sure. I'll take a look here. And we have how to use your helmet properly. I have a lot of stickers with all the stuff I've been buying. I don't put them anywhere, but I have a lot of them. And we've got a lot of legalese, how to fit it properly, how to use the chin straps, how to lock the chin strap. Okay, that's all your government safety stuff. And then we've got the goods. We have the helmet itself in a protective bag. Now I've seen some really cool helmet carrying bags. They're basically like luggage. People don't realize that you really do need to protect your helmet. It's not just to protect a fancy paint job. If you drop your helmet from a reasonable height onto a really hard surface, you need to replace it. And the wife didn't realize that. She stuck her helmet out on the washing machine and it was just teetering on the edge, you know, over concrete. I said, hey, you know, if that falls, you got to buy another one. She's like, what? I didn't know that. Yep. That's no joke. Oh, that is beautiful. All right. I've never had a black helmet. My previous was silver. The wife had a, 
a nice painted red and silver design on her last one and her new one is that wine that I showed you in her overview a lot lighter just I noticed that right away significantly lighter I'd say a good 15 20 percent I mean it's noticeable it's not like day and night and hers is definitely still lighter than this but that I would expect this is a full face compared to a three-quarter so on here we've got to your uh, features three large upper air intakes so we've got these here that slide back and open I will keep all of these vents open all the time and then one in the center got a slider here that opens this little hole so there's your three front top vents should I have some on the back of the switch too yep right here you can open that up so that gives you a real nice flow over the top of your head looks like they improved the spoiler a little bit it's a little more contoured very cool what else do we have here large CWR1 shield which basically means standard clear wider and taller field division that would be much improved because uh, the RF1000 although it was a great quiet helmet did have a pretty narrow band of vision I, I saw a lot of the helmet down at my cheeks and below never really had an issue up didn't really have an issue to the side I wear glasses so that's really only the the front and down field division that I'm concerned about but I'll be interested to see if I notice any difference when I ride with it large lower air intake you open this one ah slides down very cool that'll definitely be open also that looks a little bigger than the last one off to uh, I'll pull the RF 1000 in here and we'll do a side-by-side -side when I go through these features four large upper exhaust vents okay that's the rear one I showed you easily adjustable QRE base plate huh that's a little tougher to actuate Definitely tougher to actuate. Thicker. A lot thicker. They added these. This cab is a lot thicker. The face shield has this edge about a quarter inch thick. That is double width. So there's a lot less flexibility in this edge. That's cool. Looks like it's on the top too. Probably has to do with the pin lock system. Standard looking release here. One lever. Pull it off. It's easy going down, but it, it's got more resistance going up. About twice as much going up. The other one, the RF-1000, it's pretty free. It would it would actually blow up if I had it cracked, like here, and I took off at a light, it would go up. This doesn't feel like it would do that. There's a lot more resistance, which is a good thing. And it says lightweight, compact, aerodynamic shape. I'll agree with that. And then it goes through all the different layers of material in it. Man, like I said, that stuff deteriorates. It's no joke. You can you can see and feel the first two, but the the lack the last three those are hidden. You don't know how bad they are, so pay attention to the inside layers. Five years, people. Five years. Dual layer EPS liner. This is this should be pretty cool because the whole liner now is washable and removable. Take the strap out here. And this not only has a total removable liner, but it has different size cheek pads. This, I believe, comes with the largest, because this is uh, the double XL, and there are three different sizes you can get. But this should fit me perfectly. And which size cheek pad it comes with depends on the size helmet you order, so they kind of go for the median. But for all the other options you can move up or down if they're too big or too small for a good fit for you so this is the double xl in black it looks very nice let's take this label off get a better look at how it appears very cool emergency use only pull red tab and remove cheek pad oh, it must be if you crash they can get the helmet off easier i always wondered about that i don't think my old one had those stickers I don't remember them at least a little lip down here all right cool so let me grab my RF 1000 and I'll just do a real quick side-by-side -side here for you all right I specifically wanted to do this 1000 versus 1200 comparison here because this is most likely what people are going to be jumping to and from the 1100 came out in between about the time that I stopped riding last time 
but they kind of killed it. They took away some of the cool features and they tried to make it more of a budget helmet. So it went from being a real great top of the line one to eh, and not a lot of people jumped to it. So there's going to be a lot of people that are still wearing these 1000s that are at the end of their life. So now they're looking at finally they improved it again and the 1200 is back to being a top of the line with all the cool features that this had plus some. So there we go. Let's go over some differences. Uh, one, this has the additional top vent. Nothing here. This just has the old side ones which I don't think I ever closed in its entire life, so they're a little sticky. These have two positions, half and full. These just have open and closed. Does it? Is that a half? It's, it's really stiff. Yeah, it's just one position. Down here, this vent is just a big, clear piece of plastic. It's a little clunky to close or open. Down is closed on this one, whereas the new one, it's an external plate, very much improved smoothness. And again, it has two positions, half and all the way open. Super flexible comparing the two visors. This is, again, very thick not as much flex this is very thin in comparison and a lot lot less effort and again this would blow open pretty easily this one is a lot stiffer especially going up nice difference there size wise mm, man it, it's real close this is maybe five ten percent at the most taller that's really about it i I'm just looking at these side by side, trying to line up the bottom here. Yeah, it's it's real close. It's nothing, nothing day and night difference wise there. Pretty similar. I mean, they kept the core shape, they kept the core dimensions. This one looks a little more streamlined the way the visor is blending in. This has a lip, especially on the top and where the sides are. This visor kind of looks like it's stuck on in comparison. Again, not a huge difference. Looking at the back, you have the exits here for your top vents and this little clear plastic slider. And then the new one, it's all in one. Just one position, same thing, open or closed. Spoiler is a little bit different. This one is a much more pronounced. It's got a lip here. And this one has these little veins. And it's a much smoother ramp. And these spoilers here. So we'll see if it's even quieter. And how the buffeting is, especially on the back. Look at the opening. Try not to make a mess because this thing is absolutely shredded. Much better padding on the sides here. This is just like a real thin leather strip and this has real nice cushioning here. Much better side pockets. This is designed to put in speakers. This wasn't. There's an area for them, but this has designated areas for it. Straps look identical. No changes there. Nice and soft. Certainly top of the line on both. All right, so there you go. Hope this helps somebody. I will have again a full review of this once I get more seat time. I also need to mount my GoPro. I have a separate video for all of that. And I gotta get on the road, make some cool videos. See you later.